Good morning. Uh, this tip here is on how to build a set of test points that can recalculate the nominal value or the, your standard value based on entries in other fields. Uh, so this in this particular scenario I'm, I'm using a gauge block comparator and I can't measure directly you know using single gauge blocks uh, because the range is so uh, low and uh, the resolution so high I need to look at the deviation or, or the difference between two different gauge blocks um, so in this case I set up some dummy test points with some uh, a dummy uh, tolerance I'm not exactly sure what they are without looking it up so I just I just made this up but what we want to do is take two gauge blocks and calculate the difference between the two and set that as our nominal value and then recalculate the tolerances. So the way we do that is first in our setup grid, now you see where I've got one called gauge block comparator. Uh, what we want to do is set up our, our description, our, our nominals, our tolerances, you know, all that stuff as our nominal would be as we wish it to be then what I do is come over and find the line standard formula we drag that out here and what I'm going to do is build a formula that will calculate this new nominal value so open that up and I go to variables and as you'll notice in variables I have a whole list of uh, these field names these are basically the same fields that we have over here with few ex with a few exceptions that are not there um, things like you know group and all that there's really nothing to calculate with so those aren't here but the any of the numeric fields are over here so what we're going to do is we're going to use the extra number fields to capture the information about the two gauge blocks so our upper higher uh, value gauge block is going to be extra number one and from that I'm going to subtract the second gauge block that would be number two and we hit OK so this builds as a formula of N1 minus N2 so I'm now going to copy this into the other field uh, the other test points so we have these here so I'm would save this test point template just like that now this this is in your in your setup grid is where you would do all of your setup information for the stuff that the technician shouldn't have to worry about resolutions units formulas any of that kind of information that they don't need to be messing around with needs to go in here in the setup side then we switch over to the display or results grid and here what we're going to want to do is and I've already done that here is drag out the extra number one and extra number two fields uh, just like we had in our formula but we want to rename these so that the technicians know you know kind of what these are used for so in this case I'm going to rename the field and we'll call this upper gauge block and we'll call this one the lower gauge block now as you'll notice in here we have uh, the name of the alias from over here but you also notice that if I hover over it you see it says extra underscore num2 that's the actual field name in the table so if you're ever doing any kind of scripting or any kind of stuff like that, it's helpful to know what the name of the actual field is behind the scenes. So it's one of the things that gets confusing, and it took me a while to, to start learning it over, you know, through usage, is that a particular field in the test point grid can have three different names, depending on how it's set up. Um, it's got the field name, it's got the alias, and then it's got the field label, whatever you're calling it. 
The other thing to remember is if I've got different setup grids, I can name this different things in the different setup grids. So I can use this extra number two in another setup with a completely different name doing a completely different formula, for instance. So it, it, it gets a little bit confusing, but if you understand how this is structured and have a place like this to go where you can see all of the information about it, it makes it a lot easier to, to navigate and to work through things like this. So I've saved these as uh, upper and lower gauge block. Uh, one thing to remember as well is you have the fixed field side and the non-fixed field side. Now what this really means is this is the non-editable side, this is the editable side. So if there's anything that you want your technician to see but not edit, make sure it's on the left hand side. Anything where it's a data entry and they need to be putting information in there then put it on the right side of this uh, fixed field line. So the other thing we need to make sure is we save this. And I've already created a gauge block comparator one. I saved it previously and we're just saving our changes. So now if I go back to our disk setup grid we've got all our information here. We've got the formulas put in. Um, let me try, I think I reload. And go back here. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now we perform our calibration. Oops, events, calibration. We go to our calibration results. You'll see we have our target test point that we want, but we don't. We can't get exactly that. We have our two gauge blocks with uh, the actual measured value for each one of them. So let's say our upper block is 0.1002997, and our lower block is 0.1123411. Now if I exit this, you'll see it recalculated the difference between these two and recalculated the tolerances. So our new deviation, it wasn't, you know, triple O three because I didn't I couldn't get exactly that. It gave me exact you know what the difference was between these two gauge blocks. So now I can put in my as found and as left at you know let's say point zero two nine Eight three. That's out. Oops, I have too many zero. Not enough zeros. There's zero. There we go. And it works for all of them because I copied that formula. So if, let's say if I did a ten and a seven, it gives me a three and recalculates. So hopefully this will be able to uh, help you to use your test points a little better and and create more complicated and sophisticated uh, test point scenarios. If you have any questions or have any issues, you know where we are. Just give a call to the help desk or send us an email and uh, have a good afternoon. Thanks a lot.